Denver's dominance. Joker, triple-double, 32, 21, and 10. Murray, triple-double, 34, 10, and 10, even though that last rebound shouldn't count. <laughs> Making matters worse if you're a Heat fan or a Chiefs fan who has been rooting for the Heat, look at whoever won game three when the series was tied 1-1. They end up winning the series every single time. Those are just facts, everybody. That's from me and Josh grinding the all 22. So, Brew, <laughs> you've been 10 down. So, I know the Thank answer you to this for question. Acknowledging that one. <laughs> well, I'll ask it anyways. Did Denver just prove why they are the favorites? Yes, and they will continue to prove it that they're the better team over the next two or three games, however long this series goes. Oh. It's only going two or three more. Mm. All right, and there is an old saying, gentlemen, in basketball. Dusty, show them the old saying. What's the old saying? I didn't come up with it, but it's an old saying. Oh. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Uh -huh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how the Miami Heat have gotten this far. Mm. They beat more talented teams from Milwaukee and Boston because they outworked them and they outsmarted them. Here's the problem. You can probably though. take that down. Though. Now you're facing, I love that photo. <laughs> now you're facing a team uh -huh. that is more talented than you, but plays just as hard and just as smart mm. as you do. And so if you're the Miami Heat, guess what? You're going to lose. As long as Denver brings the energy and intensity we keep hearing both teams talk about, they're better. They're going to win. And let me count the ways. Number one, oh, last night. Here we go. They out-rebounded them 58-33. Why? They're bigger. They're much bigger. Can I? Nikola Jokic, Aaron Gordon, and Michael Porter Jr. out-rebounded the Heat by themselves. Can, can, I know you Those got a long three list. by themselves. Can I give yes. you just a, a possible counter to the rebounding thing? Because that's the note everyone's pointing out. The offensive rebounds were 13 to 10. They were very close. How much of the rebounding edge was uh, the Heat were missing a ton of shots, so there were a ton of defensive Grab rebounds to be had? a few offensive rebounds. I get that, but it they was, got demolished. They There's got, no downplay but in the it, fact it that they just, got demolished. It was just, but the Miami the missed so many and more shots were, than they They got did. very few Go second ahead. shots. They probably got some late, but they, they were getting very okay. few second Go ahead. shots. As you were. All right, that is hard well. work exhibit A. Yeah. All right, the rebounding. Secondly, as I said yesterday, after Mike Malone getting in them for the last two days, what's going to happen? The defensive intensity will ratchet up. True. And that's what they did. Do you know, Nick, that after contesting only 41% of the three-point attempts by Miami in games one and two, they contested 60% of them yesterday. Pretty and good. Miami is up shooting 31% from three. Yeah. All right, is that is exhibit yeah. B okay. for hard work. How many? Work. It's for four minutes. There's okay. just two. All right, two and then more, there's two this. More? No, then there's this. There's one more. Because, okay. <laughs> Nick, I don't know why, but somehow you, you came on here yesterday and said, there's no more adjustments to be made. Oh, I heard that. Denver can't do anything else. No, I yeah, you did they, say that. They didn't. Really? They didn't. Adjust. No, they actually did. What all right. Did? First of all, they put Jokic and Jamal Murray in the most dribble handoffs they've done all season long. Okay. All right. So, they, so they the, why did they do that? Yeah. Because Jimmy Butler is on Murray, and when you do a dribble handoff and you have Jokic screen, now whether whether uh, right. they switch or not. Jimmy still can't get there immediately, so you create the yeah. space Murray needed to go off. Okay. So he had 20 points early. Second adjustment. There's more? Yeah, because you sit up here and said Where there was going to be no adjustment. Well, the, Here's the second adjustment. Yeah. They didn't help as much off of Jimmy. All right, so All what right, did that that's do? That's an actual they adjustment. Didn't, no, both of them were adjustments. Okay. They didn't help as much off of Jimmy, so <laughs> that allowed them to keep Struess and Gabe Vincent and the rest of the well, nondescript Heat role players from going well, off. Well, Tony Brothers helps Gabe Vincent. And Gabe Vincent, oh, Gabe Vincent shot three for true. 19 for his three. True. Come on. The, the, the right, Gabe there's Vincent more adjustments, part. but the okay, bottom enough, line, all right, the enough. bottom line right. is the Nuggets right. are better, and as yeah, long as fun. they come we hard we and play hard minutes. and smart, <laughs> they're going to win. Right, and we'll Five, be right back. <laughs> Oh, no, no, don't even start. Go ahead. We'll be right back. As much as you talk on this show, I don't even want to hear that. Oh, no, I'm just, I, that ahead. might have been a new record. Um, all right. <laughs> so here's the thing, and this is very odd, and this is why I'm glad Brew went first. Not only because I had time to make a new cup of coffee, but also because Knowledge, we baby. watched the same game 
and came to the same final conclusion mm-hmm. potentially, but for very different reasons. Because I think the Nuggets looked the scariest they have looked all postseason yesterday. Hmm. Because they did something that I think every champion needs to be able to do, which is have a game where your role guys don't have it. Correct. And they didn't. I know Christian Brown, you know what I mean, had the best mm. game of his young rookie yes, playoff did. career. And but Gordon KCP, Bruce Brown, and Michael Porter Jr. were three for 16 from the field and one of eight from three. So why did Denver win? Because their superstar, super duper star, and their overqualified Robin, secondary guy, were fantastic historically great and that makes them scarier than ever than in any other scenario because you know the role players are going to go up and down right. and if your championship hopes are we need to make sure the Bruce Brown and Michael Porter Juniors of the world Michael Porter Jr at this point I know he makes the max is playing like a glorified a role, role player, player. Yeah. If, if the championship hopes rest on those guys, you can be in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. If the championship hopes rest on your multiple-time MVP and your soon-to-be future all-star, I think we all think in, my, in Jamal right. Murray, that is a clearer path. And sometimes the numbers fit my memory in a way that maybe delights me in a way it shouldn't. I asked for two different things today when we were doing our production meeting. I said, hey, can you guys check and see what the best Shaq Kobe points, rebounds, assists combined finals game ever was? Don't put it up yet, please. And then separately, I said, can you guys put together the only time Shaq and Kobe ever faced adversity in the finals? There's only one time ever. Game two against the Sixers. Because they had lost game one at well, home. Well, when they won. Oh, they correct. Won, in the three-peat. Right. I'm talking about in the three-peat. Yep. I'm right. talking about in the, in the run of their dominance. They lost dominance. to Detroit, right. And then our statistician, Dustin, he used to be called Dusty, but his name is Dustin. Our statistician, Dustin, said, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> they're the same game. The best Shaq-Kobe combined finals game ever okay. is the one game they faced adversity. And look at the numbers. Now we can put it up for Shaq and Jokic. Jokic, first ever 30, 2010. Shaq, 28, 29. He added eight blocks. He's a pretty good player. Mm-hmm. Jamal Murray, a 30 point triple double. Kobe, 38 and six. And why was that Lakers team so terrifying? Yes, Rick Fox and Derek Fisher and all of that, but it was because backs against the wall gotta have it. Those two guys are gonna eat your soul. Mm-hmm. And Jamal Murray is not Kobe Bryant. And Jokic, is not Shaq, but can impact the game, I think, nearly as much on the offensive end. Different type of player. But it was, to me, kind of perfect. That that the Nuggets, I know it wasn't a must win, but they needed this game. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think the other guys played great. And I know you agree, Wilds. You should follow Wilds on Twitter, Brew. He was concerned about some stuff. And those two guys were spectacular. Those that, two guys that did, were spectacular. Nick, that was good. That deserves this. Here. <laughs> you, you, come on. You, you can you come over to this side. You don't have access this to is the, the olive, Nuggets olive what? tree I when they are the I, 17 I just you have picked the, to win the title. And, and the Heat are you your 17. You you I mean, and, and I'm not offering you any You clearly branches. believe Denver's the no, better team. This is, listen, that was that after was that, that soliloquy? I yeah. mean, my goodness. This this is, where was the chess meeting? Where was the denial? I'm more confident now. Right, exactly. The idea that two guys are going to have a triple-double in game four. They're going to keep that up. Hold on a second. I have At no point have I said... I think now the Heat can't win the title. We're going to talk about the Heat angle of this later. I am saying that the reason the Nuggets would be the favorites is because Vegas believes that their two guys have this game in them. And they had it in them. Well, they didn't know anybody had that game. And and by the way, to Bruce's point, that game's never happened. I understand 30 20. We like big round numbers. 30 point triple doubles. Oh. Never happened in the history of the NBA. Oh, you mean Regular two, teammates, or teammates having 30-point yes. triple-doubles. Two 30-point triple-doubles. But, by the way, I, I don't think... 
that it's a major adjustment. Hey, Jokic and Murray, do more. Well, two they man never, action. they haven't done it before. They, they, so they, like, lean, it is they a major leaned adjustment. into their strength. That but why haven't they ever done adjustment. it all season? Because I think they, I think when you are, your back's against before. the wall. You lean they into what you do They were two-two with Phoenix. Best. Yeah, they were never. It was an worried adjustment. Nick just admitted. They There's were never more, worried about Phoenix. There's always adjustments to be made. Joker always. becomes the first player to post a 30-20-10 game in the finals history. Brew, are you ready to crown Joker the undisputed best player in the entire world? Yeah, and I have been. I've said this now what a couple weeks. Uh, he is the best player in the world. That doesn't mean he should have been MVP. And people are always getting that mixed up. Was Steve Nash ever the best player in the world? No. no. I also would have never voted him MVP, but I didn't make those mistakes. I voted him twice and yeah. proudly. Mm -hmm. I thought he deserved it. Dirk Nowitzki, ever the best player in the world? No. I don't think so. He would have. No. He had an argument one year, but not yeah. when he won MVP. He was not. When he the won best MVP, he, didn't he was have great. An yep. Not the best player in the world. Russell Westbrook, ever the best player in the world? No. So my point is. This is not the MVP discussion. Right, but I this don't think people are. This is about the best player in the world. But people are really not comparing him to the MVP. They're asking, a lot is of he better are. than Giannis? Everybody well, no, knows but he's a lot better of people are talking about him, and Embiid is trending on Twitter. Okay. That Embiid was best player in the world for 20 minutes. That's trending on Twitter. That's not trending okay. on Twitter. Wilds tweeted it. Did you tweet that? That was Wilds' <laughs> tweet. That was literally you Wilds' tweet. You did say that in the media. Wow. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. I got to have to follow you. I'm going to start following <laughs> yeah. you, man. That's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I anyway, didn't want to know what 20 minutes it was. I never saw it, but go ahead. Yes, he is. he's clearly the best offensive player. <laughs> There's no question about that because he scores not only at every level, mm. three-pointer, mid-range, post-up, but he does so efficiently at every level. He's one of the best passers in the NBA, period. Forget center. He's, I think he's clearly the best all-time big man passer. Mm. He is one of the best passers in the NBA right now. And then uh, what he does, he, he reminds me of Magic and Bird in that he can dominate the game without being ball dominant. And what that they run the offense through him, but because he's not ball dominant in the dribble. Right. This is ball he dominant. Is when ball you dribble for 15, 20 okay. seconds with some of the best players in the world have done. LeBron, Chris Paul, Steve Nash, guys like that. When you are ball, when you they run the offense through you, but you're passing, you're moving it. That's great. That allows everyone else to be involved. That's how mm -hmm. Magic and Bird did it. And all the teammates could be their best selves with Magic and Bird. Oh. It's the same with Jokic. His weakness is obviously defense. I thought last his, night he, he was he awesome. He was great last night. Mm -hmm. And Nick, we poo pooed it during the season. He's not a great defender, but he is top 10 in defensive rating individually this year. His size and intelligence and the fact that he's a great defensive rebounder, the rebounding. which is a defensive stat. Yeah. It ends possessions. So. The, Look, everybody listen, else has that you – I'll let you talk about some of the other guys that huh. would be in the argument. There's only one other guy in the argument. There's out. only one other guy in the argument, and it's the guy who you and I both agreed without any equivocation headed into these Was. playoffs with the best player, Giannis. So I think it is right now a two-man race with respect to Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Devin Booker. Joel Embiid, Evan whomever. The, and we should address some of them because there are there you and I had had it as Giannis. Yeah. Some people had it as Kevin Durant. The, the, that, some people had yeah, it as Embiid. That's fine. But I for for, Steph, for, for my purposes, it this is a Giannis Jokic discussion. Mm -hmm. And that's the discussion I, that I'm gonna focus on right. for a moment here. I at worst, he's the second best player in the world, he being Nikola Jokic. I am going to reserve the right. To say for for me to call him the best player in the world needs two more wins. That's fair. I am not going to strip Giannis of the title for losing to Miami and give it to a guy if he then loses to Miami. Let me now also remind people and Wilds. We all have short memory, short enough that Wilds is, you know, Mr. Nuggets, but he also brought a live deer on the set. He, at one point in time, <laughs> was – No, that exactly. Was That's, no, I, I'm defending you there. I didn't see the, like Oh, you, you got you – got It little, was a harsh you, you didn't get a lot of sleep. You're up so late podcasting that you're a little on edge today. So, uh, Giannis in the finals was 35, 13, and 5 on better than 60%, had two – 40 and 10s, and a, and a 50 and 10. Giannis, in the series they lost against Boston, was 34, 
15 and 7 with two 40 and 10s and a 40 and 20. Giannis's playoffs the last three years averages compared to Jokic this year. What you are going to see is they are essentially identical aside from the assists. The assists are pretty big. Of course, but I would argue Giannis's gap defensively is pretty big too. I think he has an argument he's the best defender in the league. But, Nick, what about this? You you can bring up the numbers. Can can I say one other thing and then go ahead? Also, Giannis, when he didn't have Chris Middleton, lost in seven games in round two to Boston. Joker, when he didn't have his second best player, the last nine playoff games, he went one and eight. And so I just don't think when Jamal Murray, and I know he everyone still had says Drew, I, and he had I get, Brooke Lopez. And I, right. And I, I understand everybody says, oh, but he also didn't have Michael Porter Jr. I think we're seeing more and more that maybe Aaron Gordon's the third best guy on that team. Well, Gordon's not, only it, been there recently. But Gordon was years. there last year when he yeah, went the last year, year but the years that I'm talking about. So the only so again, this is not I understand coming from me, people are going to take it harshly. I'm not a, I'm saying at worst he's second okay. best, but I don't think it's fair to Giannis. But just you just yet. it is fair. Because Giannis's weakness is much more glaring than Jokic's. His weakness is he can't shoot free throws but, or mid-range shots. So if you can be like Miami and wall off the paint, what is Giannis going to do? But, so here's my question. If, if you have a weakness that does not – I understand this It's impacted year. them two postseasons. No. Oh, in you, the bubble oh, and you this mean, past I'm, I'm Right. Well, I don't think Giannis was the best player in the league prior. I'm talking about from the title to now. We have seen it. We have seen his team. We've seen it impact him. I would argue one game. Game. Uh, w- w- it impacted that they lost. him against Boston the, last year. I when he had 46 and 20. Yeah, because his the shoot series? percentage was in the 40s. I, oh, the you're talking about the game seven. I was talking no, about game period. six. No, that, period. That, that series. That series. But over the total, shot in the despite, 40% the, range. despite his lack of a shot. He shoots the same field goal percentage as Jokic well, in the postseason. Well, not, not in that series against Boston. I, I, I understand And my that. point I, is great defenses are able to limit him to some degree. Now, he's still great. I still got him second. But I'm saying that's a big weakness. And, and if t- more teams start capitalizing on that, then you can really slow Giannis and, down. What he, he should do is work on a post game to combat sure. that. At and times. I would be, and again, if Jokic wins the title, then he fa- it, it's close. But I, see, this is where I disagree with you. I don't think it's just about who won the title or no. I don't either. Look at that. You got to bring eye tests into it I, too. And I, one guy doesn't shoot very I well. I think Giannis's eye test right now is being hurt by our by our short term. The most recent thing we saw from Giannis looked so bad that we're forgetting the fact that he hasn't been able to shoot ever. Right. And we were calling him, in, uni- in unanimity on this show, clearly head and shoulders the best player in the league going into the postseason. We knew he couldn't shoot. And we were like, doesn't matter. No one can stop it. Mm-hmm. So I just think there is a bit of recency bias there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.